like someone was trying to break the door down. This was the moment where I thought everything was over. I mean, I thought I was going to die. So on the floor of the uh, of a special house session, lawmakers were given a safe platform to speak about their experiences during the Capitol Hill siege. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez once again slammed critics for questioning her version of events. Sadly, less than 29 days later, with little to no accountability for the bloodshed and trauma of the 6th, some are already demanding that we move on, or worse, attempting to minimize, discredit, or belittle the accounts of survivors. In doing so, they not only further harm those who were there that day and provide cover for those responsible, but they also send a tremendously damaging message to survivors of trauma all across this country. Hmm. So let's bring in Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace from South Carolina. Congresswoman Mace was the first woman to graduate from the Citadel. She's a brand new member of Congress, but she has already gotten into it over this issue in tweets with AOC and other members of the squad. Representative Mace, good to have you with us uh, today. Hey, good uh, good I, I just want to ask you, you good, af good afternoon to you too. I want to ask you about that whole event yesterday mm -hmm. uh, where people could sort of step to the podium and talk about their experiences. You know, it felt a little bit like a, a therapy session. Um, nobody belittles the how frightening this was for right. so many of you. But was that right? Do you, what was that exercise all about, really, do you think? Well, in many cases yesterday, what we saw on social media, you know, in some cases was that, that this was politicizing a lot of what happened. I mean, if you politicize a traumatic event like this, and I've been very vocal about the events of that day, and I have not belittled or minimized anybody's experiences whatsoever. I was, uh, I was fearful that day. I talked about being barricaded in my office. I've talked about the trauma, and trauma affects everyone differently. And if, and if folks needed to have time on the floor to express their feelings, their emotions, the trauma that they experience, and they have every single right to do so. But what we don't have the right to do is either allow the media to exaggerate what actually happened or to peddle in, in false rumors or false facts that happen. I, I, I live in facts and not fiction, and there were no rioters uh, in the hallways uh, coming to our offices that day. We were fearful that that might happen, but that never happened. And we were seven to 10 minute walk away from the Capitol Dome where the violence was transpiring. This was a terrible day in our nation's history and one that I never want to witness again. So you and um, and the others, including AOC, mm -hmm. were, as you say, about a seven to ten minute walk away through the tunnels that connect the Correct. Capitol building and the Cannon House office building where your offices are. Right. Um, here's AOC mentioning the Capitol Police, and we'll, we'll talk about why she may have done that. Uh, right. Let's just watch this. To our Capitol Police who are willing to defend us, we thank you. And again, to our staffers, we thank you. So she said that the Capitol Hill police officer, it turned out to be one of them who was banging on her door and saying, where is she? Where is she? Mm -hmm. um, no doubt looking for her to make sure that she was safe because right. she was, you know, probably uh, high on the list of people that they might have wanted to encounter. Right. Um, so is she doing a bit of cleanup on that topic with the Capitol Hill police officers with this comment? Right. Well, earlier this week, she was disparaging our Capitol Hill police. She did it again last month. I mean, this is a week where uh, we saw in the Capitol Rotunda, um, we paid homage to officer, Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. Um, this was not the time and the place to disparage the Capitol Police this week, and, and uh, we need to support them. The only thing standing between members of Congress and their offices and the violent rioters on the Capitol Hill at the Dome were our Capitol Hill Police. They were there to protect us, and the reason they evacuated us out of our offices that day was because there were threats. There was a pipe bomb delivered to the Democrat and the Republican National Headquarters. And so these were, this was a traumatic event. It was a violent event. Five people died that day, something we should take very seriously. Seriously, and uh, we need to to defend and protect those who are there to protect us. 
It, it feels like this could have been an event that would have brought a lot of members closer together, right. having been through this together. And yet, it feels like with this um, experience that everybody came out and you know discussed about the, their feelings right. and all of that last night, um, it seems like it just is being used in some ways to drive a deeper wedge and to, to broad sweep all of you, all of the members of the of the GOP. With right. you know, you're sort of a little bit like them too. Right. No, absolutely. And and the divisions that we see, and I said this yesterday, I'm tired of the division and the American people are tired of it. Um, at some point, we have to look each other in the eye. We have to look ourselves in the eye, look in the mirror and say, this is, this needs to stop. The divisiveness, politicizing every single decision, every single vote to the highest extent possible is never going to help our country. It's never going to hurt the American people who are out of work, their businesses are shut down, and kids aren't back in school. We have work to do, and it's time to get back to do our job.